Hey, good evening. Glad you could join me tonight. Bill Boshear is here till uh, probably around 12 o'clock or a little later, an hour or so. And uh, stick around. we got uh, a lot of things to cover tonight. You're a part of it. Uh, again, thank you for joining us. And for those people uh, who happen to be downloading this around the world uh, in Google, thank you so much for joining us, particularly the people in the Middle East. Uh, I've come to find out through the email and your kind uh, words uh, of appreciation. We here at WBQC appreciate that. Thank you for uh, listening, and uh, I hope the information we give you is timely in, in every other fashion of it. Uh, Looking at some of the stuff that has happened this week, uh, when I, uh, I talked earlier today with Mr. Larry Nichols, and uh, if you don't know who Larry was, Larry has been uh, the thorn in the side of the, uh, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton for years, uh, and he politely told me something. Uh, this was the lead story in the Miami Herald this week. Now this, for those of you who haven't followed this, this may not be one of those earth-shaking stories you want to know about, but the voting system creator dies in a plane crash. Well, right there, when I saw that, the antenna went up. Uh, the founding partner of the systematic voting system headquartered in Boca Raton was killed this weekend in uh, Venezuela when his private plane traveling uh, plummeted into a house near Caracas Airport. Uh, he was killed along with a pilot and another individual. And um, both engines failed. And um, I, for those of you who are pilots, you know what I'm leading up to. Uh, and when I said to Larry Nichols, we have been looking at the voting scam that happened in Florida. Uh, there has been a lot of question about the voting machines. Are they legitimate? Can they be sabotaged? Can they be uh, rigged? Of course they can. Hell, we saw it. It was on television. And you know the, the idiots used them anyway? Yeah. Well, we spent too much money. I'm telling you. It doesn't get any better. And tonight, I've got uh, Uncle Jay will be here with a short segment, about two or three minutes segment, of his rendering of the Congress and the Senate. And boys and girls, you don't want to miss that. You really want to hear that. And uh, earlier, we got a call from uh, a gentleman in, at Okinawa, uh, Mr. Er Ernie uh, Sharp. Uh, Mr. Sharp uh, called, was kind of, he got here a little early. But he may call in a little later, and if he does, we'd love to hear from him. Um, the idea that this guy's plane crashed, I'm coming back to that, uh, accidentally can be ruled that, but the people who know things, hmm, they have a tendency to mysteriously... I don't know how to say this, but die accidentally uh, under the Clinton regime in, in uh, and I'm not saying Clinton's had anything to do with this, don't misunderstand, uh, but it's got all the trappings of uh, we're sending you a message, you didn't get it. Uh, it's going to be interesting to come back and what they find out about the plane. For both engines to fail together, I don't know. If you're a pilot and you've got uh, twin engine experience, is that something that commonly happens? I can understand one engine giving out, certainly, and twin engines, uh, faulty gas, could have been a number of things. Anyway, the point that I'm making is that the guy who was under investigation for the voting machines is now not a problem for those people who did not want that information out. He's done. He's toast. We'll do a break, come right back, and we'll bring Uncle Jay back when we come back. Stick around. We've got more to do, and you're a part of it.
We're back. Bill Bosch here, still with you here for the next few hours, or next hour or so. Uh, by the way, do we have that uh, Uncle Jay ready in there? Can we? I'll, I'll tell you what. Take a look at this and pay attention to the calendars. It's hilarious, but it's so true. Uncle Jay's taking a beautiful vacation with an ugly shirt. And maybe your family is taking a long weekend off, or maybe you can only afford to take one day off. Unless, of course, one of your parents is in Congress, and then you can take both weekends off and the entire week in between. In fact, welcome to a special Uncle Jay episode all about the hardest working Congress in America, Congress. That's why Uncle Jay's news word for this week is recess. Recess is the word they use when Congress takes days off. Now, it's not like school recess. Uh, the Congress doesn't go out and play and goof off and pick on people who can't fight back. They do that when they're in session. No, congressional recess is officially called a district work period. It's when each congressperson goes back to their hometown to do a job and cons- to do the job for their constituents. There is a district work period for President's Day, Memorial Day, Independence Day. Each one of those days lasts for a week, by the way. And then there's a two-week district work period in April. It's around spring break when everybody leaves town, so the Congress people have no choice but to follow their constituents to where they are and and work. Now, all those work periods makes them so tired, boys and girls, that they need the whole month of August for a... Just so they can recharge... uh, Actually, that is also called a summer district work period. So actually, that must be the hardest work of all. But the whole rest of the year, they're in Washington, hard at work, Monday through Friday, doing all the, all the actually just Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, because they need Mondays and Fridays to go back to their hometowns and work with their constituents. It's like having a home office, boys and girls, with all the savings of a home office, if you don't count the flying there and back, which they don't because uh, your parents and Uncle Jay pay for that. And someday you will, too. Oh, and let's not forget those exhausting fact-finding missions. Oh, they're grueling the incredible amount of facts to be found in places like Hawaii, Cayman Islands. So when Congress actually does get some time off, they have earned it. Between Christmas and New Year's, they get to be with their families. And it's actually between Thanksgiving and New Year's when they get to be with their families. It's actually between late October and New Year's. Boys and girls, if you wonder why Congress needs so many days off, maybe it's because they need to rest up for the hardworking year ahead. Because, you know, with over 90% of them getting reelected, they're pretty sure to be stuck in this dead-end job for another term. Well, boys and girls, if you still haven't figured out the difference between work and recess, that could mean you'll be congressional material when you grow up, or especially if you don't. Well, Uncle Jay will be back from his recess next week to explain the news. And until then, remember, a good kid is good news. See there, you didn't know that. When I, when I saw that, I kind of thought it was cute. And then I got to looking at the calendar, and the guy is right. The guy is right. They're never there. They're never there. That kind of explains why you could have... I'm not quite sure about this, but maybe you can help me with it. Uh, Larry used to, Larry Nichols would say, you shouldn't reelect anybody, vote them all out. And he was right. Uh, Have you ever wondered about this? Let Let me give you some ideas. Have you ever wondered if both parties, the Democrats and Republicans, are against the deficit and against the deficits? Now, I've heard all the candidates say they're against it. We have deficits. Have you ever wondered why if all the politicians are against high inflation, high taxes, we have high inflation and high taxes? Now, here's the kicker to this. You and I don't propose uh, the federal budget. That's the president. He does that. And by the way, he just asked for $70 billion more. Let me put that down there. 70, that's with a B, boys and girls. And he wants us to give him $70 billion. That's right. So that he can operate from now until the next president gets in and then they can do whatever they want to. Okay. You and I don't have congressional authority to vote on appropriations. The House of Representatives does. 
And you and I don't write the tax code. Congress does. Uh, and you and I don't set the physical policy. Congress does. You and I don't control the monetary policy because that's the Federal Reserve does that. And there's 100 senators, 345 congressmen, one president, nine Supreme Court justices. That's 549 human beings out of 300 million are directly legally, morally, and individually responsible for the domestic problems that plague this country. Now, if there isn't something wrong with this picture, you have to ask yourself, 549 human beings, 545 human beings, bring, uh, being spin much of their energy convincing us that what they did is not their fault. They cooperate in this common con regardless of the party. Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter. They're all the same color. What separates a politician from a normal human being is an excessive amount of gall. No normal human being would have the gall of the speaker who stood up and criticized the president for creating a deficit. The president can only propose a budget. He cannot force Congress to accept it. Is there something wrong here? Am I missing something? The Constitution, which is a supreme law of the land, gives sole responsibility to the House of Representatives for originating and approving appropriations and taxes. Who is the Speaker of the House? She's a leader of a majority party, and she and her fellow House members, not the President, can approve any budget they want. If the President votes it, vetoes it, I'm sorry, if the President vetoes it, they can pass over his veto if they agree to it. It just seems inconceivable to me that a nation of 300 million cannot replace 545 people who stand convicted by present facts of incompetence, irresponsibility, and not a single domestic problem that is not traceable directly to those 545 people. We fully grasp the plain truth that 545 people exercise the power of the federal government, then it must follow that what exists is what they want to exist. Does that make sense? Am I, maybe I'm missing something here. If the tax code is unfair, it's because it's unfair. They want it unfair. If if the budget's in the red, it's because they want it in the red. And if, if the Marines are in Iraq, it's because they want our Marines in Iraq. And if the Bush wants $70 billion, maybe we ought to give it to him. I'm going to take a pause in the action. I'm not done with this. Unless you and I take it apart here piece by piece in the next few minutes. Stick around. Be right back. I'm talking tonight about the 545 people who run this country, and uh, they keep running it in the ground and then keep telling us, well, we didn't do that. It wasn't us. If they're not, by the way, you know that they're on a different social security system than you and I are? Oh, yeah. It's because they want it that way. There's no absolute unsolvable problems this government can't solve if they want to. Let's go to the phones. I want to hear from uh, I, this is Penrick here, I guess. Mr. Penrick or Penrick. You're on the air. Hello? Yes. Uh, who, who did you vote for last? Uh, I didn't vote for anybody last time. 
Uh, that's Penrick's not the name. I, that guy keeps calling. Every week he's got a different name. He used the same name. I talked to him. Anyway, there's Julie. Julie, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello? Julie, go right ahead. Hi, Bill. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm glad you're... Where, what part of Kentucky are you calling from? Independence. Hey, that's a good place. Go ahead. Yes, it is, Bill. And I would like to say that I would like to thank you because I think that you are uh, giving America a wake-up call. It's oh. time for us to wake up. Well, you know? we've got 545 people yes. that um, are running this country. Oh, yes. It's and, a republic. Yes, I agree. And, uh, and unfortunately, the people voted all these people in. And what I, what I need for them to do is be accountable for their jobs. Oh, yeah. If, if I was absent that many times per year... I'd be fired in a heartbeat. You wouldn't even get to be, <laughs> what do you mean, fired? <laughs> you take one of those and it would be over. I agree, and you know what? Well, it's... they're back here helping me. Let me ask you a question. Yes. You, you live over in Kentucky, and I live over here, and I have to admit, I've been getting these uh, phony uh, computer calls from Shabbat. Steve Shabbat? Steve Shabbat. Uh, yeah, they, I know Or him. these guys call, and they get these phone we want to know what you really feel. You don't want to know what I feel. If you really wanted to know, you'd call me. But you'd have the balls to stay there and listen to it. Exactly. But no, you do it on a computer, and I'm supposed to tell you, talk to a machine. You're worthless, as far as I'm concerned. I totally agree. And, and I, you know, I appreciate you, Bill. Well, I appreciate that, but... You know, that's still not going to do anything until we vote out all 545 of them. Exactly. And you know what? I thought in the Constitution it gave us the right as a people, as a nation, if we decide as a people that Congress is not working for us or the president or the judicial system, that uh, we can vote them out. You bet we can. And, you know, They're when crooked. is the time? When is time... When, when is it time? What this drove home to me uh, is that, and, and Charlie Reese, by the way, I'm not the creator of this. Charlie Reese is. I give him full credit for this. Charlie's a brilliant uh, political writer and sports writer. He was a writer for years. The point I'm making with this is that you can't fool all of these people all the time. We've got people, well, look at yourself. Here you are ready to vote them out of office. Oh, I'm, I'm totally ready. I'm ready. I wish Uncle that... Jay helped me see it, the light on the wall. Oh, I'm... yeah. And thank God for that calendar. Well, see, I nobody... I had no idea. No, nobody else did either. And I wish... I wish that we could hold Congress accountable. We I can. don't know how to do it. We can, and we will. Uh, I'm ready to help. You got it. We appreciate it. Take care. Stay safe, and stay tuned. We got more to do, and you're part of it. Great, thank you. Thank you, dear. Let's go to Donnell. Donna, Donald? Donald? Hello? Donna? You're there, sir. Go ahead. Hey, how's it going? I want to, I want to, hello? Yes, go ahead. Yes, I want to speak on the, on the fact of how you say that our country is being ran wrong. What? I want to speak, speak on the, on the how you say that our country is being ran wrong. Oh, how, how come it's being run, run wrong? Uh, no, our country, how our country is being ran by the wrong people. Yes. Yeah, it just that uh, like like the grocery prices. Grocery prices is going up. Gas prices going up. Yep. We going to war with, with different countries, and it's kind of like, what's the reason? Look, look at it. You've got gas prices going up, and there's plenty of oil. It's the speculators on Wall Street that are driving it up. Let me ask you a question. Have yeah. you ever seen it printed anywhere in print how much the people in the Middle East get for their oil per barrel? No, nah, I, I ain't never. So you've seen never it seen that, have you? What no. would you do if I told you it was anywhere from three dollars sixty to about eight dollars and seventy-five cents per barrel? How per would that barrel. make you feel? That, that that makes me feel like I'm being robbed, and I go out here and I'm paying four dollars and ten cents per gallon. Yeah, and and Sister Hillary has proposed that the today she came out with this ignorant proposal to get the uh, oil companies to pay the taxes just to, to give us a little break. Right. 
that's no answer. In the first place, she can't do that. She doesn't have the authority to do that. Right. She don't got the authority. And then another thing, the grocery prices. Prices on groceries going up. Like, it's just kind of like our whole economy is just going down, and the only thing is going up is prices on everything. And everything they do is say, well, we're going to lower the interest rate. Oh, boy. Right. And, and, and just, by the way, did you know that by lowering the interest rate, you also lower the value of money when you print more? Oh, yeah. See, now I didn't know that. Yeah, see, now, now you're getting the drift. Right. See, our money isn't backed by anything. That's it's why good. nobody in the world wants it. Right. And they, all right. They're like our currency. Our currency is going down. It's kind five of like years ago, off. five it's years bad. ago, over right. five years ago on WLW, I told the people in the public then, that there was a housing problem, and it was going to be a lending problem. Let me tell you again, it is not a housing problem. There's plenty of houses. It right. is a banking problem, and you're going to bail them out. Here's the other one. In the banks, they had something called hedge funds, and they got into these hedge funds, and they made all these bad loans. There's another division over here in the corner that nobody said anything about. It's called derivatives. I defy you to call your bank and ask them if they've got derivatives, and if so, what are they and how do they work? Right. So that you, as an investor, going down to your bank, figures it out. Right, and this, and this is stuff that they, they won't tell you on their own. Two, pro two, two problems, two problems. Unlike stocks and bonds, the hedge funds have no oversight. Neither do derivatives. There's no board of advisors, censors, or anybody watching what they do. And the banks went nuts. They bought it. It's an unsecured, some kind of PFA, pluck from air idea, and they combine it and they sell it to stupid people running businesses. Right. They're stupid I mean, because they, you? well, yes, I know all about that. Um, Yes, I'm a, I'm a CEO, and I know all about, yes, sir, I'm, I'm, you don't know jack squat. Right, they don't know nothing. And there they go. Well, yeah, I invested heavily in those derivatives. <laughs> right. And now, the, let me tell you something. In London, right. houses in England and in Europe are losing appreciation. They are depreciating at the rate of $1,000 a week. Now, right. wait till that gets to Cincinnati. Uh, and if and you think right, it ain't coming, it's, you're wrong. Go ahead. And, 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 the, and the, economy, the Cincinnati economy is it's just all screwed up. Because me personally, I'm from Chicago. And I just moved down to Cincinnati. And it's just Chicago, it's just the, the land is high, rent is high, food is high. And I'm thinking it's going to be better off coming down here. And, and even down here, everything's high. So it's kind of like, I need to move out the country. I need to take me and my family out the country. I think I'm going to go to Mexico. Yeah, it needs, we need to just do something else. And just oh, oh lay there, people. Donald. Donald, take care of yourself. Stay, stay tuned. Uh, stay with us. we got more to do, and you're a part of it. Thank you, brother. Okay, thank you, sir. Got you. Let's go to Tom quickly. Tom, you're on the air. Hello, Bill Bosher. How you doing there, young man? Doing fine. What's on your mind tonight? If well, I have a concept. I notice you like to do a lot of research, like on a computer. Oh, you noticed? <laughs> oh, yes. I've been watching. Oh, it's that, that uh, dead give. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Have you, uh, you, you know, some people mention secret societies, like the Illuminati is a name people know about. I guess. Go ahead. Okay. Or the Brandenburgers. Bilderbergers. Thank you. Bilderbergers. You're correct. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. I got a paper on today. What I'm thinking is there's a group, and I think some of these groups influence political outcomes. Well, they do if the people they're influencing belong to them. That's obvious. That's why everybody said, skull and bones, what the hell is that? Well, they take care of their own, don't they? But there's this one group. What's the name of it? It's called the Conclave. The Conclave. And I think if you try to research or find anything out about them on a computer, you'll come up with zip because they're the real secret society. Oh, okay. Well, I'll try to find something out on it, but I appreciate the call. Wait, wait a minute, Bill. Yeah? Before you cut me off, remember I called last week? About what? 
and I made a prediction. Well, there you go. Go ahead. Okay, okay, let me finish. Now, I'm not for any particular person, but I said I heard a spirit tell me that Barack Obama would be the next president. Okay. And you kind of said, oh, wait a minute. There's... Okay, I, I remember, remember what I that? said. Go ahead. And you said, spirits, are they Democrat? No, the spirits are merely predicting the future. Uh... Would you care to make me a monetary wager? I'll bet you I'm right. Whatever amount you care to wager, Barack Obama will be the next president of the United States. I'm not allowed to bet, but if I were a betting man, I'd take it. But I'm not a betting man. Uh, but I'm not allowed to do that. But I'll tell you what I will do. Yes, sir. I'll bet you a Sunday. A Sunday, okay. At, uh, what do you call it, uh, United Dairy Farmers or something like that. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We're going to take a pause while I collect my Sunday. Right here in the side zone. Don't go away. I got more to do in your phone calls. 381-3838. Get back. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you sticking around tonight. Uh, we've got calls here. Let's go to the one been there the longest. It looks like it's Carlos. Carlos, are you there, sir? I'm going to vote for Barack Obama. Yeah, you are. As soon as you get your mouth emptied. Uh, uh, let's go to Dave. Dave, you're on. Whoops, hold on. That's not right. Dave, you're on the air. How you doing there tonight, Bill? Uh, if it gets any better, I'm going to have to take a pill. Go right ahead. <laughs> All right. I was Carlos had his mouth full of taco and <laughs> he couldn't talk oh, 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 oh. yeah go right ahead carlos all right uh bill if you could could you please uh suggest to me and everyone out there uh, a good literature book a more modern literature book on citizens rights i don't think there is one i'll be honest with you uh if there is it's it's away from me i would suggest um looking at uh, bill of rights Okay. Um, well, the reason I say modern is, is my biggest fear is this, is, is you have people calling the show talking about wanting to rectify what's going on in the government, but my fear is, is that any U.S. citizen that tries to do that at this time is instantly deemed a terrorist. Oh, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Um, you've got to be careful about the uh, homeland security. You've got to be careful about habeas corpus because there isn't any. Uh, and it just depends on how active you want to become. And I have, I'll be honest with you, I've, what I come in here with, it's because I fell over laughing. You and I could not sit in a room with a group of writers and write the crap that the Congress and the Senate does every week. You could not make it up. Sane people don't do that anyway, but those people do. Dave, I appreciate your call. Thank you. Thanks, Join sir. us anytime, sir. Thank you. Let's go back to, uh, she's been there a while. Let's go, Annette. Annette, you're there. Hey, Bill. Hey, uh -huh. hon. How are you? Uh, pretty good. I read uh, an eye-opening book this week. It was just released in April. Eye-opener. Huh? What was the name of the eye-opener? Um, it's called Five Years of My Life. <laughs> an, an innocent man in Guantanamo. Ah, yeah. And, 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 and his name is Murek. Kunas, and he sued President Bush, you know, there was no due process. It, it doesn't matter. He hasn't figured it out yet. That's why they did away, away with the writ of habeas corpus. He doesn't right. have any rights. I well, don't know if he was a citizen or what. Um, he, he was a citizen of Turkey, and he applied for German citizenship. He, has, and he picked it, up at the airport. Yeah. And uh, this book, the man has a phenomenal memory and it's a real easy read for anyone but you probably won't be able to put it down in graphic details the horrors and i'm wondering how many secret prisons do they have i have no idea they keep saying they don't have them but i'm convinced according to what you're saying they do have them and they uh, they did yes, they do they didn't have any of the uh uh what do they call them? Uh, gulags here. Uh, you know, prison camps, they didn't have those either. 
until we started showing them on the internet. Uh huh. And, then and they Halliburton go, helped build them too, and we're paying uh, As a matter of fact, that. they uh, they have refurbished most of them. Yes, you're absolutely right. Anyway, for something we don't have, we sure as hell spent a lot of money on it, but we didn't do that. We we're congressmen and senators. We and, just and we always abide by the Geneva Conference. Absolutely, and yeah. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the war trials to start on Dick Cheney and your president. President Bush. Well, I guess may, be it may not, but uh, the Boston University is already looking into it. There's people there that have already started the motion. You know, I was watching the uh, Derby today. The Derby. And Dar yes. Darley Farms in Lexington yes. is owned by the <coughs> king of Dubai. That doesn't surprise me at all. He's got enough money, he could damn near buy this station. I wish Except he would. Except for one honest man. Well, you can't you can't keep a good man down. But I appreciate the <laughs> Annette. Oh, thank baby. you. Have a good Bye. one. Thank you, dear. Let's go to uh, Doug. I guess Doug, you're on the air. Uh, yes, go ahead, sir. Yes, this is Doug. I, I'm glad it is. Go right ahead, sir. And uh, I, was, I was wondering, that, uh, was I the only one that really thought like that? Uh, uh, everybody that comes should be out of there. They they the worst people in the world. Yeah. They, they run this country so. And they voted on everything, like you say, Bush said, they, they can have a ride bill, Bush. But they, they, they won't do it, Republican or Democrat. Both of them should be out there. And they shouldn't need term limits for all of them. They've been there for life. Everybody keep on voting for the same people. If you keep doing what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. That's what I say. Doug, right. I appreciate your call, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Let's go to uh, Steve. Steve, you sound like a logical person. Go right ahead. Hey, yeah, this is, um, I was... Um, calling about the other person who was talking about a book. They wanted to... Uh, yeah, they wanted to know a good book. Go ahead. I know a good book. Uh, Ron Paul just came out with his new book. Uh, yeah? Have Revolution. you read it, sir? It's a really good book. Have you read it? I actually read most of it. Good have, Good for you. Good for you, Steve. Yeah, you can get it for like eleven ninety nine on, um, like I think, Amazon and a few other places. It might be in... I doubt it being in the libraries because we've got such a conservative system here in Cincinnati. But it's a good book and a good read. I appreciate your interest, sir. Yep. Thank you for the update. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Let's go to, uh, well, I guess there's another Steve in town. You're the second Steve tonight. Go right ahead. Hey, Bill. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing great. Hey, hey. I want you to let everybody know about all these internment camps that are being built across the United States. I just did. Well, I mean, I mean, Get the information out, you know, get websites. Well, uh, let me tell you, if I do it, they won't, they'll think I'm making it up, and they'll say that we're making all that up. So here's what I would do. Okay. Uh, I would go get on my computer, and I would go to something called Operation Garden Plot, and the second one I would look up would be Rex 83. Rex 83. Rex 83, and then I would look up the Northwoods Agreement. Okay. And, or the Northwoods Document, I should say. And uh, that will give you more than enough. Okay, Bill. Hey, Bill, I just want to tell you, I watch you every Saturday, and I love your show because you get the information out. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. That's what Thank it's you. all about. I'm glad to have you, Steve. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. We'll do a break and come right back with more stuff right after this. I got it. Hey, I got a story for you. This is a joke. It's a little, it's a joke. A young guy goes into apply for a job. He moves from Wisconsin to Florida. And the manager says, uh, do you ever have sales experience, kid? The kid said, yeah, I was a salesman back in Wisconsin. Well, the boss uh, liked the kid and gave him a job. He said, tomorrow I'll come down after we close and see how you did. First day on the job was rough, and he go through, and after the store was all locked up, boss came down and said, how'd you do? He said, how many customers did you talk to and today? And the kid said, well, I talked to one. Boss said, just one? Our sales people usually get to 20 or 30 people. 
And I said, how much was the sale for? And the kid said, $112.36, $112.36. $12,237. And the guy said, $112,000. What in the heck did you sell him? The kid said, well, first I sold him a small fish hook. He said, a small fish hook? He said, then I sold him a bigger fish hook. Then I sold him a bigger fish hook. Then I sold him a rod uh, to fish with. And then I sold him a boat. I took him down to go fishing. I said, you know, go fish it, need a boat. He said he didn't have one. So I sold him a twin engine Chris Craft. And he said, and I he said he said he couldn't pull it with his Honda Civic, so I sold him a four before. And he came to a hundred and hundred and some thousand dollars. And the guy said, You sold the guy come in here to buy a fish hook and you and you sold him a boat and truck and all this. He said, Oh no. He said the guy came in to buy his wife some tampons, and I said, dude, you're weekend shot, you might as well go fishing. Now, that's a salesman, and there are true salesmen everywhere. My hat's off to them. Let's go back to the phone, the telephone number, 381-3838. One of those interesting phones. We'd love to hear from you. Nikki, uh, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, how are you doing today? Phenomenally well under the circumstances. Well, that's good. Well, I was just calling us to try to give some people a little more information, too, because, you know, um, really, if you look back a little further in history, you'll see that, the government has been basically enslaving and locking up people for years for what they call terrorism. Um, if you look back like towards the early 1960s when the Black Panthers and so forth and those groups were organizing, they locked up a lot of those men who are still locked up today just because of what they believed in, not because of them doing wrong, but because they believed that what the government was doing wrong at that time. Okay. Is that all? Yes. <laughs> all right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Gilby, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Bill. How you doing? Uh, I was going to ask you if you, if you knew uh, a whole lot of information uh, on the, uh, the cross-border trucking project. Uh, this is something that uh, Mary Peters and John Hill and the DOT uh, has tried to put together uh, <clears throat> to uh, let the, uh, the Mexican trucks come in here. Uh, uh, those Mexican, go, those Mexican trucks are already here, Brent. Well, what I'm talking about, uh, we we put a stop to that to to that to, to the funding to that program with the uh, the Senate bill. Uh, but uh, I keep on calling my congressmen and senators every week, sometimes two, three times a week. You keep that up, brother. That's a good that's a good stick. And call somebody else's congressman. Just don't tell them who you are, or where you are. Well, the the best part about this is, see, Bill, I'm I'm not even a truck driver, and and I got. And I got a lot more invested. Uh, I, I mean, this, this is going to affect me just like it's going to affect everybody else. It's going to and affect it, everybody when they go to the when they go down to buy gas or they go to the grocery store. Yeah, uh, but but I never did uh, uh, get an answer from them what, what if they complete stopped it altogether or not. And I just I keep on asking, and um, I hope I hope I find an answer somewhere. But uh, it's probably I, I been tabled, or if they haven't voted on it yet, it's probably been tabled. Uh, you might check with the two people that you mentioned earlier. They may have some information for you on their website. Okay. You got it? All right. All right, brother. I appreciate your call. Thank you, sir. 381-3838 uh, if you're out there uh, and you're thinking about calling. Now's a good time. This line's open. You can jump in. Let's go to Jeff. Jeff, you're on the air, sir. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing tonight? I'm doing all right. What's up? Um, I got a question. We're talking about change in the system and things going on. Wesley Snipes just got convicted for uh, refusal to pay income taxes this week, and they gave him three years in prison. And he's linked up with some guy that's got a big program to start a stir, like just quit paying your income taxes. Do you know who this guy is? I do not know who he is. I'll tell you what, it's really interesting because Wesley Snipes, he's like his best friend. Well, apparently it doesn't work. Wesley's in jail. Yeah, well, he's getting three years, but the thing is, look how much money he made over that before they got to him, and it's taken him a couple years to even get to him, to make an example out of him. Well, is it, my question to you, is it worth that? 
I don't know, but as a normal taxpaying citizen, I sure wish there was a way I didn't have to pay mine and see how long it took for them to get to me. The way they screw everything up, hell, I might be retirement age before they find me. I, well, you know what I mean? I, I do know what you mean, and it is a tempting process, but as they get more sophisticated and uh, use more of the information you give them, in the digital age. Oh yeah, that's true. You can't you can't live outside. You can run, but you can't hide. Yeah, you can't live outside of that. Can't live outside the law. And by the way, you'll have to get the mark of the beast in your forehead or your hand, and you won't be <laughs> able to. And Jesus is coming. And it was, yeah, but the only thing about it is, it's all the working man. It's all on my ass and yours. Yeah. You know, there you go. my burrow is so tired. He just drags his donkey through. I'm telling you. It's well, a shame. Like the guys in Congress are talking about that they missed so many days. Aww. Hey, I, I missed uh, Thursday this week because my car broke down, and I went in on Saturday because I made up Boy, the did you get an ass chewing. Yeah, did, well, I didn't get an ass chewing, but the thing was I went in today to make up for the time because Thursday wasn't there. Now, what about one of them guys in Congress? Well, they got to put back. What I'd like to see that change is oh, man. Uh, pay them by the hour. <laughs> and put them on the same social security you and I got to live with. Well, you know what'd be even better? Put them on commission. They got to oh. earn. They got to earn by what oh, they get man. done, like I do. Oh man, would you? I'll oh, get I away. Don't, I don't get an hourly wage. Oh, I don't get Jeff. paid forty hours. I got to make my wage when Jeff, I go to work. Jeff, that last story I told about the the salesman. Yeah. I dedicate that to you, Jeff. Thank you, sir. You got it, brother. Take care of yourself. Have a good night. We're going to take a break, but I want to say thank you to Nettie. I saw Nettie tonight, I believe it's Nettie. Thank you for making food for me tonight. You did a good job. Thank you. Anyway, we'll be right back. I'm Bill Post Shears, as the man said. Uh, we're trying to get this word out as best we can. By the way, for those of you sitting around tonight with nothing to do, here's something for you to contemplate. Do you know what the war in Iraq has cost thus far? And Bush wants another $70 billion? $453 billion to date. Now, if you want to fund it, you go ahead. But I'm tired. I don't want no damn war bills. Anyway, let's go to the phones. Uh, take your phone calls. We've got about five minutes to do as fast as we can. Let's do, uh, Don, you're on the air. Greetings, Bill. Yes, sir, go ahead. How you doing? Look, let me give you two tidbits of information that you and uh, other people may not know about about your government, which we Please, know there's quickly, a lot of other quick, things wrong. Quickly, quickly, Okay, I'm an astronomer. I have been for years, and I'm in my 50s. Keep in contact with the scientific community. The Earth is heating up. They don't tell you that. They're concerned about it. Volcanoes that haven't erupted in 10, 15, 25,000 years are erupting. They don't tell you about it. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Oh, also, my wife thinks you're a stud. Well, you tell her she's absolutely true, and <laughs> she's only saying that because it is true. Okay, Thank you, sir. Get a... uh, <laughs> oh, these lucky women. Uh, Mike, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello, Mike Wants. Oh, just one quick question. Go ahead, Mike. Um, who is the national debt owed to? Who do we owe? Who do we owe the national debt to? Yes. The banksters. And exactly who is that? That's the, uh, the Federal Reserve bankers. Uh, that's who that uh, is supposedly owed to. And your income tax go to pay that. And your income tax and taxes, uh, that's who owns it. And it's the banking families of Europe. Ah, didn't know that, did you? Wow. Thank you, sir. That is a good explanation. Wow. Daryl, you're on the air. Hello, once. Hey, Bill. Yes, sir. Okay, this is Daryl. I'm a uh, old Marine from Beirut. Well, simplify. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much for the information that you disperse. Yes. And you're absolutely right when you say uh, the banking families. Yeah. That's where the national debt is at. You bet. Thank you. You got it. See, there's, uh, them, them Marines come in and they're prepared. How much time have we got? We got time to take a... 
Oh, okay. We've got plenty of time for your call. We're going to get Let's go to Gordon. Gordon, you're there, sir. Gordon, don't Hello? watch. Gordon, Hello? talk to me. Gordon, you're, you're, <laughs> boy, talk about getting confused. Gordon, you have to turn the TV off. That's first. And when you do get in, the number is 381-3838. Turn your television down. The rest of the family can hear you later. They've heard you all night anyway. So turn the television down and talk to me. That way it won't be confusing. When I say hello, whoever, you can go, hi there, Bill. What's going on? And now here is Angel. You're on the air, Angel. Hi. Hi. And Angel had her family listening. Notice how they all went, <laughs> We got one minute left, and I'm supposed to take a phone call if you're calling. But first off, let me, I'll take that minute and do this with you. Each week, we try to cover stories that are different, unusual, and they've got a pace to them. I know that some of you like to hear the <whistles> kind of stuff. And yeah, I like that. I'm known for that. I wrote a column about it for years. But it's not timely. No, I don't want to go Bigfoot hunting with you because I don't know what the hell we'd do if we caught it. Do I think they're out there? I don't care. I wouldn't bother them. If I knew they were, I wouldn't bother them. They're not bothering anybody. They're just going around supposedly running through the woods going, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I, by the way, there's enough strangeness in your neighborhood. You don't need to bring any more home with you. In the meantime, take care, stay safe, but be back here next week. There'll be a test next week. And we're done. You guys take care.